Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning. If you're new to the channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button at the bottom of the video that you're watching right now. It's that red button over there. Just click on it and turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified every time we produce a new video on this channel. We generally produce new videos on a Wednesday and on a Saturday and sometimes only once a week. It depends really. Um, sometimes our videos are very long and we then only produce one video a week instead of two. All right. And if you're new to our channel as well, we always uh, make sure that we give you all the information that you need to follow along with the videos that we produce. So at the bottom of the video, right next to uh, where the description should be, there is a button over there that says shows more. You can click on it and it's going to expand the description. Okay. Okay. So if we discuss about, you know, a link or, you know, something that was, I say to you, I'm going to link it in the description below. You're going to find that link over there. All right. And for every video that we make as well, we have timestamps to help you navigate through our content a little bit better. As you can see, a lot of our videos are very, very long because we explain all of our concepts in great detail. Okay. So instead of watching the entire three hour video, you can just read through the time step and figure out which part of the video you want to see. Of course, you're welcome to watch the entire video. But if, for example, you're coming back and you wanted to remind yourself of something, you can use the timestamp. Okay. The way that timestamps work is if, for example, you want to, you know, figure out, oh, this is how I want to do a tweet, a tweet with an image. Just click on the timestamp over there and it's going to fast forward and take you to that section that is talking about that. Okay. So this helps you navigate through the videos that we're making. Okay. You don't have to watch the entire video. Okay. So on the description as well, we will have links to our YouTube, Instagram, and all of that, you know, so feel free to like, you know, follow us on social media so that, you know, you can learn more about a school or online, all right? In this video, we're going to um, be discussing how to do Instagram automation with Python and Instapy. So um, if you've been watching the videos on this channel, we've recently done a video on how to do automation on your Twitter account using Tweepy. So we're going to do something similar for Instagram. So this allows you to schedule posts or to interact with, um, you know, um, the social media platform itself without actually being there and writing code to do that for you. Okay. So let us have a look at um, what we're going to be covered today. So I want to start with a disclaimer because um, the code that I'm showing you today, I haven't used it extensively. Um, uh, so I'm not sure about the limitation in terms of, you know, getting uh, into trouble with the platform itself, because um, when we did the Twitter one, we were using an official Twitter API, which um, we got the keys, um, the API keys directly from Twitter, which means what we were doing is perfectly within the um, allowed scope of the Twitter system and program. So, and they give you um, you know, um, limitations on how much you can use the APA for. So it's very well controlled and it's sort of allowed in a way. Okay. But what, with the Instagram one, what we're doing is slightly different. Okay. We're not going via Instagram API. We're doing our own thing. We're actually crawling the website, um, and, um, logging in and then doing our own posts or whatever we're doing. So there are, there's a question mark on whether or not, I mean, it's definitely not allowed, but how much you can get away with, you know, is what I haven't tested. Okay. So use the code at your own risk. And uh, be careful not to abuse it, okay? If you overdo anything, um, you're going to get into trouble and you're going to get your account blocked, okay? So I would assume a couple of, you know, posts every now and then is not going to be a problem. But if you are going to be, you know, writing code that is just on the whole day doing stuff, you know, you're going to get into trouble. You're going to get your account blocked, okay? So handle with K and maybe try this on a new account and not your old account so you can test the limits, what's allowed and what's not allowed. And then you can sort of do it within a safe environment out of your old, you know, normal account, okay? So I just wanted to say that right out of the bat uh, before we continue, okay? So in this video, we're going to cover, first of all, setting up our environment. So we'll be using Python in our virtual server from DigitalOcean. So we're going to set that up to be able to work with Instapy. All right. And then after that, we're going to obviously write the code that logs us in, like, comments, does a couple of things, even follow people. OK, then we're going to run some functions, you know, and automate Instapy so that it runs on a schedule. OK, so I'll show you how to do all of that. So what you need to do, first of all, is make sure that you are inside your private, your virtual server. So this is where we are. And then um, I'm going to show you a tutorial that you can follow that comes directly from the Instapy, um, you know, documentation. So if you just go to Instapy, I-N-S-T-A, 
www.ipy.org this is um you know the, the main documentation and at the top there just start at the home page okay so just click on the home page so you can go through it step by step this is also very well written documentation um and it's very easy to follow and i'm going to be following it with you on this video so that even later on in your own you can do it um without me okay so the first thing is that you need to install instapy all right and um, there's the specific, like, you know, um, small print at the bottom here um, that sort of tells you if you're on Ubuntu, you need to use the specific ins instructions to install this on Ubuntu, okay? Because um, you need to get, like, a Chrome browser. You need to get, like, a Firefox browser. You sort of need to get things that allow you to browse the website because Instapy in the background actually uses what they call Selenium, which is like a sort of like an Ubuntu uh, browser for the internet that allows you to sort of like, you know, crawl websites like a browser, but it is like done on the, you know, on the command line or programmatically. So that is what it uses in the background. So you actually have to have all of that pre-installed before you can use Instapy. So Instapy won't work if you haven't done the other sort of background installation and that's what i'll take you through now okay so underneath there where it says that's it before you even do this all right because we're on ubuntu you need to sort of right click on that open it in a new window all right and then we're going to follow those instructions over there otherwise if you if you're installing it on on raspberry pi there's instructions to follow there as well okay so uh because we're doing on ubuntu this is what we're going to be doing and you can see up here it's just, there's a lot of things all right you need to up upgrade up update your your packages then after that this is all the python installation okay python 3 build essential and then you need to get your settings right you know and then you install python paper right so all of this um we're gonna go through but if you have been uh following with us and you've got python already installed we're gonna skip some of these things right so um let's just get started with um the first one okay so this is just normally good practice to do um start by updating your packages so where am i let me find my virtual machine let me bring it over here closer today and put this over there all right so let's let's do that in the meantime and put in our password all right so while it's doing that let's see what we need to do next okay this is be very careful with that all right because um don't run this unless if it's really really important okay so i'm gonna skip that and i already have python installed as well in my computer okay so i'm also gonna skip this all right but let's see what's in here python 3 python 3 dev essential xvb i think i have all of this i'm not sure if i have that all right so i'm going to um let me just do it like that let me copy that and paste that all right so i'm gonna keep python skip all of these and i'm gonna start the i think i have but let me just put them in anyway and if, and if i have them it will just not install it will just skip but i definitely don't want to do python okay so paste that in there and let's see what happens okay um so it's gonna do all of that for you and by the way if you don't have a droplet like what i'm doing this from um i'm gonna put a link in the description below that you can follow and you can get yourself you know you can get it like a droplet installed very very quickly and then i will also um link a video in the description below that allows you that 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 we did a couple of months ago where we did the entire setup of our droplet so these droplets are like virtual servers virtual machines that are um that are being run in the cloud so it's sort of like a mini cloud server that you get for yourself all right that you can run a whole lot of code on um you know and we've been practicing on it we've been running a lot of our python code our uh, you know Django code on there so if you haven't been following with us and you're just catching up with this tutorial you know go have a look at the description I will link the video where we set up our droplet the first time where we install Python the first time so that you can at least um, you know watch that video and then continue with us going on in what we're doing here right now okay so once we've done that and all of that is installed I'm going to clear this all right so I've, I've just installed uh, from there and then this allows you to install pip3 i know i already have pip installed and i've already got my language set up and all of that so i'm not going to do that and the locales and then i'm not going to do all of that so all of that is already done okay so the next thing that we need to do is to um do chrome stable uh but if you have a brand new droplet um if you're just having a brand new droplet you might have to do all of these steps okay but if like in my case i'm going to skip some of them right so i'm going to start by doing that i'm going to cd um out of here into the I'm gonna cd um you know into the root of the of the machine and then i'm just gonna copy all of this you know so what this does is that it's going to install the chrome um stable um you know a package for me so that i could we're going to be using chrome um you know to you know to, to to sort of like crawl the websites okay so just paste that as it is all right and let it install that for you 
All right. So once that is done, then we're going to install it. All right. I'm going to copy that. Okay, it says errors encountered while processing. It's all right. Just um, go to the next one and paste that. All right. Okay, and then when it's completed, we're going to then remove um, what we had before this, this sort of what we downloaded. So we were downloading that and then we ended up installing it. But now we're just sort of removing it from, you know, from where it was sitting. Because I think if you list it over here, you will see it's this one there, okay? So we're just removing it. This one just removes it from there. And if you list again, you'll see it's no longer there. It's gone, you know. So we had downloaded it and used it to install it in the computer. And then we just finally now um, deleting it, okay? And then the last thing that we need to do is to install Firefox, all right? So Firefox is a browser that we're going to be using as well. In the background so just click yes over there and then it will be installed for you so all of these things that we're installing currently on the Ubuntu machine is what InstaPy uses in the background InstaPy needs that Chrome um, you know um, you know for Selenium and it needs the, the you know the Firefox and it uses all of that in the background you don't see it happening but if you didn't install it then then InstaPy wouldn't work properly for you all right so once you've done that, um, then you can install InstaPy pip install, okay? But you know what we like to do? We like to work with a virtual, um, what we call it virtual environments, all right? Because I like to separate my virtual environments for the different Python projects that I'm running. And um, we're going to do the exact same thing for this one. So all our pip packages um, that we're going to be using for this specific uh, program, we're going to uh, install within virtual environments, all right? So, um, first of all, before you can do that, you need to figure out the folder that you're going to be working from, all right? So, if I do ls over here, I'm listing everything where I am, and this is then this is the dev or the development folder. This is where we did all our, um, you know, our, our, our Django projects from. So, my Django application is running from here, all right? But instead of going where the Django application is running from, I'm going to cre I've created a new folder there called social, all right? I'm going to go in there instead, all right? All right, and then I'm gonna, so this is where we did all our Python 3P stuff and I'm gonna do it in here as well, all right? So I've got, um, let me just double check my own notes in here. So I've installed all of that, I've done that, um, and I've done that, and then installed Firefox, um, and then we're gonna do this one as well, the Firefox Gecko driver. We're gonna get an error later on, so let's just do it now. Um, so that it, it works later on when we get to that point. So that's not in the in this um, you know um, documentation over there, but from my experience when I was testing this, um, you're gonna need it as well um, later on. So once you've done that, um, then we can create our virtual environment. Okay, um, you need to also have a virtual environment installed. All right. So if you have been working with us in the past and followed our tutorials, you would have virtual environment installed because we use virtual environment when we created our Django project, okay? So if you don't have it installed, go back and watch what we did over there and get virtual environment installed. Otherwise, just Google, you know, how to install virtual environment in your in your, in your, in your machine so that you, so that you have it because we need that. So I'm going to uh, copy that and paste our virtual environment in there and I'm going to call it what? Let me just call it, you can call it anything that you want, right? So we call this um, Insta. ENV, all right? I always like to edit with the ENV to remind myself when I see the folder later on that is an environment folder, all right? So let's do that. And it's created. Let's list it over here. You will see um, this Insta ENV. We have another ENV in the Twitter ENV. That's where we're running all our Twitter stuff from there. But the Insta ENV, if you actually like CD into Insta ENV, all right, you will see it, the environment is actually, um, it's a folder, all right? And it's, and it's got all these things. This is where you're going to be installing your packages in the in the library and so forth, all right? So I'm going to CD out of here, and then I'm going to activate the environment. Again, to activate the environment, you sort of just type source and the name of the environment. So it's Insta, Insta ENV, like that. And then you do bin, and then you do activate, all right? And when you activate the environment, it means now we are operating now inside of the environment so every time you run pip 
okay it will be running all of those uh, functions will be running inside of the environment so you click enter and you'll see insta env will, will be inside of brackets at the beginning of your command prompt let's clear so you can see it at the top over there then you know that the environment has been activated right and if you want to know which python is active inside of the environment you can just say um um you know you can just say uh, python version all right and then it would show you we're running python 3.8.5 which means um if you run if you if you do a python command like that you don't even have to say python 3.8 it will it will be running python 3.8.5 all right and if you use pip as well it'll be using pip3 you don't have to say pip3 when you're installing everything else that you're installing all right so um so now we're running that python and um, you know we're running pip3 as well inside of this virtual environment. So then we can install InstaPy. And when you do pip install InstaPy, it's installing InstaPy just in the virtual environment that we're in right now. So that whatever I'm installing in here doesn't clash with my other environments like the Twitter one and all and, and the other things, all right? So I'm gonna paste in the pip install InstaPy and it's gonna collect it and boom, boom, boom. And you'll see when you install when when you um install this i mean I'll, I'll i'll take you later on through it and you'll see when i what i was talking about when i said that there's other things that it's using in the background all right so you'll see over there you've got um you know um obviously the url lib that's you know pro above all of that emojis it's got emojis in there um it's got i wanted to show you this one you know selenium all right this is our this is like the browser for you know that 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 it's using in the background to crawl through the website and find you know the things you know that it, when you're logging in it's going to crawl through the instagram website and log you in and things like that all right it's using all of that and selenium requires um you know chrome you know to work that's why we had to to install chrome separately all right and there's other things in here as well app scheduler so there's a lot of things that it's a beautiful soup for. This is also like a, a, a classic, you know, Python, you know, a web crawler, right? So all these things is installing in the background. So this already gives you an idea of how InstaPy works, okay? InstaPy works like a web crawler. What it does is that it, will, it goes to the Instagram website, okay? This one over here, it goes to the Instagram website. And um, when you give it your username and your password, it logs you in okay on, onto the website with your with your email and password but it's crawling the website okay that is why sometimes you're going to get into trouble because you know these social media sites they don't want you to crawl them they want you to go there on the phone on the app so that they can <laughs> sell you stuff that they're selling you they don't want you to use computers to do that and that's why you have to do this with care with, with very careful consideration all right so we've got our environment installed we've got instapy installed let's start running some code all right well, now that you've got InstaPy installed in your virtual machine and um, you've got your development environment set up, you can start um, sort of interacting with Instagram and automating your Instagram, you know, um, you know, social media interactions. Okay, so um, the documentation is really very well written, and I would recommend that you start there by reading through everything that they have there, and they will sh they show you in very great detail all the things that you can do and you cannot do with InstaPy. Okay. But to give you a very high level um, breakdown of the library, it really it allows you to to sort of like you know to um, scrap through your Instagram page or your Instagram timeline using certain um, you know hashtags or certain topics, and from then when you have a list of topics and a list of you know of, of you know posts that you that you you know sort of aiming towards, it allows you to comment to um you know to like those things or even follow the people that are commenting or that are posting those things okay so it's not geared towards scheduling um posts like what we did with tweepy but it's geared towards you know sort of browsing through your instagram page and uh, finding interesting topics that you like and interacting with those topics so that you sort of appear like you're constantly there on instagram re you know recommenting on people's things liking people's things following people unfollowing people so it allows you to interact more as opposed to being just a scheduling engine for automatic posts i don't know if that makes sense okay so um, if you go through the documentation, I think this is where we started and it shows you quickly how to install it. All right. So we've gone through the installation and then um, over there, um, this is basically how you get started. OK, you call in the InstaPy, um, you know, function and then you put in your, Insta your username and password. And then after that, um, there's many things that you can do uh, when you create a session. OK. 
So I'm going to take you through code that I've written, um, very high level code of a, a specific sort of like, you know, session that you can do with Instapy, right? So I've written it under a function that I've called it WordPress session. So you need to provide it comments in um, in an array if you wanted to sort of comment on your behalf, okay? So I've, I've provided this comment in an array and the more comments you provide, obviously, the more options it will have to choose from because it will randomly choose from the list of comments that you give it, okay? So these are going to be comments that it will post in response to a certain action that you ask it to do, okay? So it's not scheduling, but it's more sort of interacting with players or with, you know, sort of posts in that field that you're going to be looking for, right? And then you're going to create your session, all right? So this creating a session here is the same thing that we're doing over there where um, at the top of it, there where you're creating a session with your username and password, okay? So this is the main thing that you need to do when you're creating a session. So that's, so that's what we're doing over there and we're calling it a session. So if you assign a variable to that and you put in your username and password, and it's very important because we're doing this programmatically, okay? We're going to set this headless browser to true okay so that it allows us to you know work without um you know, with a, work, work with a headless browser then after that because there can be error there can be a lot of things you know usually with this kind of arrangement i like to work within a try uh you know uh, accept block this is similar to javascript you know try catch where if there's an error at least you can handle that exception okay so it doesn't crash your whole program um so we try running something and if uh, there's an exception all right, we can print the exception. In this specific case, I will then pass so that it continues with whatever it is it was doing and it doesn't stop, all right? So um, another thing that I've imported at the top there is smart run, okay? So um, I'm gonna run all of my, uh, my I'm gonna run my session inside of the smart run uh, function, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start by saying like by tags, okay? And I've given it two tags. And the more tags you give it, the more it's gonna go through um, I mean, it's going to, it's going to, the amount, if you're giving it an amount over there, like 10, all right, it's going to go through this tag and it's going to do all of these actions for like 10 times, you know, 10 times. So it's going to go through like 10 WordPress posts, all right, and interact with 10 WordPress posts in your timeline. And then if you've added also WooCommerce posts, it's going to do what it's going to do for WordPress and then it's going to do the same thing for WooCommerce. So the longer you make this list, the more iteration it's going to do. So it's going to do something similar to for element in list, and then it's going to do all of that. So the longer the list, the more iterations it's going to be doing because it's going to be going through each and every single tag inside of your list and performing all those actions inside the tag, okay? So in this specific uh, session, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to like by tags. So it's going to like for every WordPress tag, for example, 10 amount of WordPress tags, it will like a comment. So, it will, so this will be similar to me going to Instagram and at the top of the day, searching for a WordPress like this, all right? And then when I search for WordPress, you know, you can follow tags on Instagram like you're, like you're following pages, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna, it's similar to it doing this and then finding all the posts around Instagram. And if I've given it 10, it's gonna go and like this one, like that one, like that one, until it likes 10 or 20, however much I've given it, all right? So that's what this is doing. And then it will do the same thing for WooCommerce, which means it will search for WooCommerce and then it will do the exact same thing for WooCommerce. Then once it's done that, then I've said set do comment true, which means over and above it liking, it might leave a comment as well, all right? And um, the comment percentage is how much percentage of the tags that it likes, it must comment, I'm assuming that's what it is, right? So if I've given it 50%, it will sort of, it should comment 50% of the things that it, that it likes. But I've, I've tested this a couple of times and it, these numbers, even this 10, it ends up doing sometimes more than 10 and I have no idea where it gets it from because I've given it 10, like, I don't know. In practice, Instapy is sort of like a wild animal. It does, you know, pretty much does whatever it wants, but at least it likes the stuff based on what you've given it. That's what, you know, that's a good thing. So it will go to the WordPress and it will go to the WooCommerce and then it will comment. And then uh, this is where you set the comments, okay? So what goes in here needs to be a list, okay? You don't just put in one comment for it to replicate the same comment. You need to give it a list or an array, which is what we have over there, all right? And the list can be as long or as short as you want it to be, all right? So, um, so set comments, which means if it's going to comment 50% of the time, you have to tell it what are the comments it needs to be commenting. That's why we've set the comments over there. And then do follow. All right, so do follow. What do follow does is that it will follow specific, um, you know, 
be users and whatever. But in this specific case, I'm not sure how it's going to follow uh, WordPress. So maybe perhaps I need to just not have this in here because um, you, you want to work, you want to work with do follow when you are, you know, doing things on, on specific users as well so that it can follow, you know, people because it can't really follow like, you know, a, a um, you know, a theme, but I'm not sure how this works. I mean, we'll, we'll have a look. We're going to test this out and then we're going to see what happens. Okay. So this is all I'm going to do. All right. So I've, inst I've installed Instapime. You can see this is like a few lines of code. It's not a lot of coding because everything is being, the heavy, heavy lifting is being done for you by the Instapy um, library in the back end. Okay. And like I explained to you, it uses Selenium. It uses a lot of the, you know, it uses an actual browser. So it opens up an actual browser inside of, you know, like the Firefox browser. It opens it up inside of your, um, of your machine. And um, it, it literally crawls through um, the Instagram page and it performs all these actions that you've given it, okay? So it is like a bot, a crawl bot, and it does all of this on your account and you give it a username and password so that it logs in. And then it, it works slowly as well because it's trying also not to get into trouble or get caught. That's why, you know, it takes a bit of, a, a bit of time to perform all these actions. And uh, depending on how many actions you've instructed it to perform, it will do all of that. And um, I think if you get this, if you plan this very, very well, um, over time, you know, you can write this kind of code for your account and you can find yourself actually engaging with topics that you're interested in and you can be active in the industry. And that's how you're going to grow your social media following and grow your, your account, your, your account and grow your business by being a, you know, a person that's, 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 that's like active on, on social media. Okay. So I'm going to do all of this and then I'm going to copy and paste this code. All right. Into my virtual machine. And then I'm going to run it. And then we're going to have a look at how, um, this code runs just in a moment. So now I wanted to show you other functions and everything that, that is available with Instapy. Okay. So if you go through the documentation, for example, you can, you know, so far I've only shown you how to like, you know, like by tags. I think that's what we did, right? Let me just have a look at this code again. Yeah, we did like by tags. Okay. So that's the first one that we did. All right. So there's other things you can do, for example, right? So you can set user interaction, which means it will, uh, uh, it will comment uh, with a photo, for example, and then you can put a, a photo path over there. Okay. You can like by feed. All right. You can like by location. So for example, you can go to, you know, you can get like a URL for your location and then it will go and search for those um, URLs or that location. And then it will like based on that. You know, so maybe you can find, if you like in Sentin, you can like, you know, you know, tweets or whatever that are within your area, you know, for example, to be more active. So there's, there's many things you can work with, you know, multiple location. You can, okay. Follow by tags. We've already looked at that. Oh, wait. So this is follow not like. So what we looked at before is like by tags. And over here we have a follow by tags. Okay. So this will follow users based on the hashtags without liking the image. Okay. So this is a good way of getting users, you know, with social media, one of the best ways to get of, uh, you know, to grow on social media is by following other people. When you follow people, I found this and I've tested this 10 to 20%, depending on your, on whether you're interesting or not, between 10 to 20% of people that you follow will follow you back. 
So if you've got a very interesting topic, even sometimes upwards of 20%, even 30% of people will follow you back. And if you're very boring, maybe 10% or below, but you will get between 10 and 20%. So if you follow 100 people a day, okay, out of 100 people that you follow, 10 to 20 people will follow you back. So you can get 10 to 20 people to follow you every single day just by following people on social media. And then over time, if people don't follow you back, obviously you can go and unfollow them and whatever. And this um, Instagram API also allows you to do that, to follow and unfollow people. So you can follow people based on tags. This is if you wanna follow people within your areas of interest. So for example, you pick a hashtag like, like Sentin or a hashtag like, like, you know, jobs, what, what, and then, you know, you're going to find people in that area and then you follow that people that are on that hashtag, because then, you know, these are people that are tweeting up. I mean, that are commenting around your hashtag. So they are the right interest groups. So you're following the right people. And you're not following people randomly. Okay. And you're following people that have the interest that you're interested in. Okay. So you can try this. I haven't, honestly, I haven't used this for following people. I want to just test it on just liking things, things that I know Instagram are not too strict on. And over time, as I see how this thing works, then I can maybe perhaps go a little bit bolder and start following people. All right. Then you can also follow by location, follow by a list. So for example, you can have a follow list. So you can decide all the people that you want to follow. If you know all their usernames and then you can do that and then you can follow. Right. What I like as well is that you can also follow people's followers. There it is. Follow someone else's followers. This is something I do and I do manually and it takes a lot of time because I know that if I'm building, for example, my account that is, um, you know, an online um, you know, job search engine. All right. I find other Instagram accounts that are doing similar things. All right. So I go and I look for, I don't know, uh, there's a, there's, 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 that, there's like a, um, an account that's called, um, job search South Africa, job search, whatever you find those kind of accounts that I've got a thousands of followers, 20,000, 10,000 followers upwards. All right. And you put it on a list like this and I would do it manually. I would go to that account and get all their followers and sit there for like, 30 minutes a day, just click follow, follow, follow. But that, that is so tedious, okay? So with this program, for example, you can session follow user followers, all right? So what you're going to do is that you're going to find those accounts and you're going to put them in here. And then you're going to obviously decide whether you want to randomize it and then the amount, okay? And I like randomize because it's not going to follow according to a list. It's going to follow randomly, which is... So um, you can follow people. You can follow what other people are following, all right? Um, you can interact with people's followers as well. You know, there's a lot of things like this. You can go down this list and I'm, uh, and I'm going to link this so that you can go and, and look through it and do it in your own time. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to now write for you, um, a program to, um, to, to do scheduling, to schedule this so that it runs automatically. And first of all, we'll start by using the Python scheduling tool. All right. So just go to, 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 uh, to your online, uh, to your internet, whatever, and just search for Python um scheduling uh schedule library that one over there all right and i think it's one of the first ones over there it's it's very popular uh schedule library and it's very very simple and i just love that about it and we're going to use that um we're going to rewrite our function which we have over here so we're going to rewrite this function using the scheduling tool all right so that we can schedule this automatically and it will run um you know when you want it to run okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to install a uh, pip install schedule. Okay. So make sure that you're inside of your, of, of your uh, virtual environment and, the, and just pip, uh, pip install schedule. Okay. Um, a requirement already satisfied, which means I already have schedule installed. All right. And then you just need to import a schedule and time. All right. So I'm just going to copy that and import schedule and time at the top over there. All right. And then once I've done that, just move that to the bottom there. So I don't see that anymore. Um, so once you've imported schedule, there's, there's many ways you can do the scheduling thing. Okay. You can schedule a task every 10 minutes. You can schedule it every hour. You can schedule it every day. All right. You can schedule it every Monday. You can schedule it every Wednesday, every whatever, you know, you can schedule it as, you know, as you like. Okay. So what I like to is to schedule it, for example, every day. Okay. So that's the one I'm going to pick. All right. So let's say I pick this and I want to, um, so I've been put a schedule at the top there and then I've written the function like that. All right. And then I'm going to uh, use schedule every day at 10 30 due instead of job. Right. 
Um, if you can see at the documentation over there, it says do job, but job is actually the function that's written over there. So you want to just take the name of the function, all right, without the, you know, the brackets. So the name of the function that we want it to do is this one over there. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it in there, all right? do wordpress session all right so what i so this is what i'm going to do and instead yeah wordpress and woocommerce and um uh, set comments set do follow i'm going to delete that set do follow because i don't think it actually follows anything um uh, it, but i think i wanted to comment and to like and then actually want to write another function all right um i like this one that follows people all right where is it um actions i think it was under Set like by locations. Um, do, do, do. There's that function that uh, likes, follows people. Um, like us or photos. Okay, set user, follow user followers. Okay, session user followers. 50% of newly followed move to the profile and normally take into account. Follow user, follow users that are following that someone else is following no follow someone else's followers yes that's the one right follow the followers of each given user the usernames can be either a list or a string the amount of each account uh in this case is 30 user will be followed so that's the one i want to do okay and then uh randomize sleep delay so this actually gives a delay that's better because then you don't get blocked by things like that so that's the function i'm going to copy all right so i'm going to go over there and I want to write another function that just does that, okay? So in this specific case, I'm going to write div. I'm going to call this function div. Follow some people, all right? And um, I'm going to I'm going to create again, um, you know, the smart smart run session, all right? So try pass. We'll do it like that, all right? So try with smart run uh, session. I want you to follow people. That's all I'm gonna put in the session. Follow users, followers, and then I'm gonna decide who I want to follow. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pick like. All right. All right. Randomize true. Yeah. So 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 then you've got two functions that you can run. Okay. So then you can do the same thing. Schedule every day. All right. And instead of doing this at 10.30, so 10.30 in the morning, and this is like, it works on a 24 hours, uh, 24 hours, okay? So um, 10.30 is 10 a.m., all right? If you wanted to do it 10.30 at night, you must say 22.30. So 10.30 will be like 10 in the morning, but I think the right time to do this is, is around 12, okay? Um, 12, 12, around lunchtime, because people are... People interact with the social media more around lunchtime, okay? And then later in the evening, let's say around um, 17, 1750, I don't know, 1755, um, you can do um, the second one, all right? And then after that, all right, you're going to go and um, let's look at the scheduling again. Then we're just going to run this. Uh, while true, schedule run pending, time sleep, whatever, and then it runs, okay? So once you've done this, you say that while true. Um, um, the schedule will run all of these schedules and then it will sleep and then it will always run it. Okay. So what will happen is that every day at 12 30, it will run the WordPress session. Okay. And then at 17 hour 30, we want it to run this follow some people. All right. And then we'll do, do it like that. All right. All right. And then, uh, paste that in there. All right. So generally this function is done. You should be able to say Python. All right, Python, Instagram.py, like that, okay? And then it should run. So you won't see anything because currently what it's doing is that it's waiting for the specific time. Because you're not going to sit in front of your computer and run the, the, the thing and wait for it, you know, because the moment you, like now that I've done a keyboard interrupt, okay, the program is stopped running, okay? If I log auto out of my virtual machine, the program stops running. So what you want is that you want the program to run automatically, even if I log out of the virtual machine and I go have coffee, 
with my friends, the program is still running. So even keyboard interrupt or whatever, you want it to just keep running. You want it to run 24 seven. You want it to run until you stop it from running. So one of the best ways to do that is um, there's two options. When I first started, I actually used a, a program called screen. Okay. So um, you can go and do um, install screen or Ubuntu, you no know, search for that. Um, so this is like uh, digital ocean. Oh, nice tutorials. I love the judicial ocean tutorials. Okay. So you can go through this and digital ocean has got a very nice, uh, you know, tutorial and shows you step by step exactly how to install screen. Okay. But I think screen is also limited because, um, with screen as well, when thing, when you, when the, when your, when your virtual machine, for example, shuts down, if there was like a power outage, not with, at your house, but like at the server house, at the cloud, if the cloud had a, a, a power outage, if something went wrong and the machine was restarted, I'm not sure that screen restarts. And I've, I used to run a lot of uh, bots on screen and every now and then I used to have to check them, are they still running? And if there was a problem, you know, the screen will stop running and you have to remember which screen it was. And I used to have like so many screens and I couldn't keep track of them, right? So I actually stopped using screen because I found a better way with web. The same way we deploy um, websites and we deploy web applications using system um, system files, you can run your a Python script on a system file. Okay. What a system file does is that it's always a bit extreme, but, uh, and it's for really like very important programs, but why not run your, your Python, you know, bot on it as well? Because what a system file is, it's like a file that is, um, on, on, on a certain part of your computer that the system itself, uh, runs the file. And if um, for some reason the, the computer was switched off or the computer restarted or there was a power outage or there was like a maintenance, you know, a lot of with this cloud function, you always get the email that, oh, there was a maintenance, we're maintaining this part of the whatever, and then your computer gets shut down, okay, literally for the maintenance. If you are not there to restart your program after the maintenance, it will remain down, okay? But if you're having it run in the system file, even after the lockdown, when the computer gets restarted, it goes through all of its system files and reboots all of its system files. Okay. So if your file was in there, it will also just get automatically run. So your file will always run unless if it crashes inside of the file itself, for whatever reason it crashes. That is why I'm running it inside of a, of a while loop. All right, because I'm running this inside of a try except loop so that if there's an exception with this, it will just, it will print the exception, but it will continue running. Okay, because I've tested this, I know it's fine, it will run. If there's an exception, I can like sleep for 10 seconds and, and continue. Maybe you should put like a sleep for a little bit to give it time, you know, because if, if there's an exception, it's not going to be anything major because if you've tested your code, you know, long enough, but you have to keep watching what these exceptions are, by the way, to let something run continuously, especially on your uh, Python program. If maybe the exception is that they're blocking you and you keep forcing it, then you will get blacklisted. So you have, actually have to like keep checking what is exception. All right. So the first couple of weeks I would be watching this on a regular basis, even daily basis, just checking the log files. But after that, I'm just going to like let it run. You know, like once you know, you've really thoroughly tested your code, just put in a system file and let it run. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do a system file over here. All right. So, um, I think I have the, the, I've written the, you know, uh, uh, my faithful notes are going to help me with this. All right. Because I can't always remember how to do these things from the top of my head. All right. So here's how you do it. Okay. So the first thing is that you build the the service, the service file itself. Okay. And you have to build it in this location. All right. So I'm going to copy this as it is. All right. And I'm going to LS, I'm going to actually like, um, actually I'm, I can just sit here. It's fine. All right. And then I'm going to open this file, but there's two things you need to note before you open the file. All right. Before you, you, you build the file, you need to note where your environment is because you need the ENV. And then you need to note where your root of your, where your file is that you're running. So let me just LS again. And my, my environment is in here and it's called Insta ENV. So I'm just going to copy that like that. And then um, I'm going to paste it at the bottom here so that I can remind myself that my environment is in here and it's called Insta ENV. That's very, very important because you need to be able to access the environment. And then you need to know the file that you're running is going to be this Instagram.py file. Okay. And it's also in the same location. So it's inside here of the same. So e the ENV and the other one are in the same location. So this is the file that you want to run. 
okay so i'm gonna paste that in there so these are the two important things the file that you want to run and where your environment is but this is your virtual environment because you need the virtual environment to run the file and then uh, while it's running just just quickly type which python like that so that it can tell you the location of your python or as well all right so if you type which Python, it shows you where your Python is and just copy that in the, because this is a Python that's currently running inside of the virtual environment. So these are the three important things that you need to remember. Which Python, where the environment is, and the file that you need to run. Okay, so then let's go back there and open that. And then this opens, sudo nano opens a nano, opens this file. All right, uh, with sudo permissions because this this is a protected uh, path. You need to um, to have super user rights, and then you're gonna give it a name. Okay, you have to give this x x. I have it in there just to remind me that I need to put a name over there. All right, so I'm gonna call this um, insta bot insta uh, insta bot. All right, and remember what name you've given it because in future whatever you're doing with it, you have to be able to go back to that name. All right, so let me just. Uh, find a place where I'm gonna write the name of my bot Twitter. I'm gonna call this Instagram. Instagram scholar. Like that. Alright, so let's go in there and delete that. Delete that. Insta. Instagram scholar. Alright, so I'm gonna call this Instagram scholar service. All right, and then it's gonna ask me for my password. Let me just put it in there. All right, so I'm gonna then copy these files, all right, as they are, okay? But there's some changes I'm going to make later on, but I'll explain to you what those changes are, right? So the first thing is uh, description Twitter bot for Scholar Online. So when I did this, this is what it was before, all right? So it changed this name to be whatever the description um, that you want. Okay, so this is not going to be a Twitter bot. This is going to be an Instagram bot. We did the Twitter bot last week. Instagram bot for Scholar Online. And, and then after multi-user target, don't change that. The service, so this is the service that we're going to be doing. The type simple, just leave that because we're not doing like web apps. We don't need a username and whatever and all sorts of other things. So just leave it as type simple. The environment is where you need to now specify the location of your ENV file, all right? So this is why you had to remember or know to where the, your environment is, all right? So I'm going to just delete all of this, all right? And then I'm going to paste my, uh, where I put in, uh, you know, that path where I put in for my environment. Um, home, home Zatosh. All right, so let me just remind myself. Uh, the environment was home Zatosh, then it's inside development. I love that Insta EMV. So I'm going to paste that in there. It's very slow today. There it is. So it's home, Zatosh, development, Instagram, Insta, ENV, bin. Okay, so you, you add the bin at the end because that's where all your, you know, uh, where, your, where your, your files are. And then over here, the next one, the exec start is, a, is executive start. It's like, how must the system start your program? Okay, normally when we run our program, remember, we'll say Python and the file name. So we'll say Python, Instagram.py. Python test.py, whatever the name of your file is, you'll put Python first. So Python is that um, what runs the file, and then you'll put the name of the file. But because we're running this from a system file, you can't just say Python. Number one, you've got lots of Python versions on your computer. You've got lots of environments on your computer. It, it needs to know. So the best thing to do is to give the absolute path to where your Python is. This is why I was inside, while I was inside of the ENV, I ran which Python. And you must do it inside of the ENV so that it, it tells you the exact location of the Python inside of your ENV that you need to run. Because there are many versions of Python, usually in a, in a, in a virtual machine. And especially when you have lots of virtual environments. And, and in my specific computer, I know I have at least three versions of Python. So I have to know which Python I need to be running with. So you need to run with the right Python. So this is the Python that, that is going to be running, okay? It's the Python inside of your Insta ENV, all right? So I'm just going to copy that whole uh, absolute path to that Python, and then I'm going to delete this 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 path, okay? And it starts from home Zatosh, so um, I can delete everything to the from to the beginning, and then specify that is the Python that I'm running with. 
and this is very very important if you just write python in here you might have an error because you might end up running with a different version of python and not the python that's inside of your of your or that that was what was started inside your of your virtual machine okay so i'm gonna paste in there and it takes me to um instagram folder inside of my insta env bin python that's the python that i'm running with and then the next part of this argument is the actual file that you're running okay so our file is instagram.py which is inside of the of, of this development instagram or file um we also need to give it an absolute path so i'm going to copy that in there and then I'm going to go to the end of this and I'm going to delete all of this. All right. And another thing that you can specify in here, especially if you're still troubleshooting earlier on, is you can specify the location of your log files. Okay. I usually do this. I shouldn't have done that. Home, Zatosh. So I can give it the absolute path and then paste the other. Okay. This, this, this double, double slash should be one and just double check all of these things as well that you don't have typos because this is really where the problem starts if you've got typos in here you're going to have some issues all right so what i was going to say is that um i forgot what i was going oh, yes location of your uh, log files okay you can specify the location of your log files here, especially with a new program which you expect a lot of errors and um you know every time there's an error like with if you're running this on a normal shell if there's like a, a you know a fault it'll it'll paste in there what the problem is but when you're running this with the system env where you're gonna go check for you know the printout of your um you know of your shell you know so you need to specify the location of your log file where you're gonna put the log file and then you will create log files in that place so that when you uh, have issues uh when it's printing stuff out especially if you got an exception in this in this function over here where you've specified um you know for it to print out you know the trace back you know for example then you want it to you know you're not be able to go somewhere to check what that traceback is and for that you need to then specify it inside of your in here you know you can specify the location of your log files okay but i'm not going to do that today i'm just going to close this just double check one last time everything looks fine i'm going to say yes and then you created that service file so after you've created it it's just that simple you're going to create it and then you're going to run it that's all okay so to run the file you're going to go uh, start you're going to start the service all right, so you're gonna paste systems uh, uh, system CTL start. Remember the name of the service you have to give. You have to specify it by name. I think I called it Instagram Scholar. Um, and if you're not sure what you called it, um, you can just because it's still over here and you don't get the spelling wrong, you can just copy it from there. All right, Instagram Scholar, and then it will start the service. And the first time you have to enable it. All right, so I'm going to. Uh, paste over there enable instagram scholar okay all right and we created a sim link and it enables the service and then after that you can check the status all right and if everything is working well you will see a green status button okay uh okay so sorry uh status of instagram scholar i think i've Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. So if everything works well, you will see like the green thing over there. Uh, everything is active and running. That's it. 36 seconds ago is when we activated it. Your file is running now on a system file. You can go exit. You can clear this. You can deactivate your, your environment. Okay. You can clear. You can exit even out of your virtual machine. All right. You can exit. Out of your virtual machine go home sleep go to the beach do whatever you want to do have some beers sleep all day your file is going to be running on schedule as you've scheduled it at exactly this time it's going to do all the jobs you've given it to do and if you had like multiple bots you could run them all on this and you could just be relaxing some way and it's going to do all of this for you so that's the beauty of python and all the things that python can do for you guys so thank you guys a lot for watching i'm looking forward to your comments in the description below and um you know yeah build some amazing bots and tell me all about it